And let's go to the phones. Good morning. What's your bid? Oh, hey, I'd like to bid on the cactus collection for $9 million. <laughs> And my number is uh, 349-174-97324. Good morning. What's your bid? Power bid on Midtown and power bid on the Mosaic. 594-239. Hey, what are they talking about, Texas? A um, couple of comedians this morning, I guess. Oh. I see Mark was nice. I have other things to say about him. Well, uh, they think they're cute. If they're that cute, well, uh, tell them to come on, bring out their million-dollar bag with all the money in it that they can collect with Texas. All right, thanks. Good morning. What's your bid? I would like to bid 40 rubles on one of the children from the children's party. Good morning. What's your bid? I would like to bid 50 rubles for the saxophone lesbian. Instead, why don't you find something else to besides play on the phone like you're 10? Good morning. What's your bid? Uh, cactus. 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 And cactus. How about a life, a life, a life, a life, a life, a life? <laughs> Again, 465-1570 is the number to call if you'd like to place a bid. Good morning. What's your bid? <laughs> Again, 465-1570 is the number to call if you'd like to place a serious bid. If you'd like to act like an immature teenager, then this is not the time to do it. Good morning. What's your bid? Uh, yes, I'd like to be on the weight loss treatment. Hello? Yes, the, we don't have it up for bid yet, sir. Oh, oh, so I cannot have it. Not right now. So I must stay the fat, is what you tell me? Yes. I don't want to stay the fat. I guess no, no lady. Good morning. What's your bid? Uh, Denise. Uh, number is 465. Cactus, cactus. Good morning. What's your bid? Hi, I'd like to bid uh, $15 for your job. Thank you. Good morning. What's your bid? Yeah, I'll take the opening bid on the Smith car care. And the, can't you put a tracer on there to stop these people from calling you? I don't know. I'd like to think we can. What's your number, sir? 372-8738. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. What's your bid? My bid is five. Five cacti. Good morning. What's your bid? The next bid on Village. And the feds can put a... A tracer on them line. And your number, sir. Good morning. What's your bid? Uh, hi. Does the kids' birthday party include the kids? No. Um, how much would I have to pay extra for those? That I don't know. I see. Um, would you be able to find that out? Because I would like to place a bid if I can uh, find out how much it costs to get the kids with it. Yeah, it's called one eight hundred Get Alive. Thank okay. you. Good morning. What's your bid? Next bid on Smith's Car Care, 372-8738. And I think it's pretty sad that that's all these people have to do on a beautiful Saturday morning is prank call. It's disgusting. I agree. That's a $42 bid now on the detailing. Good morning. What's your bid? You think a tracer can stop me? <laughs> Good morning. What's your bid? I personally think it's disgusting that all you have to do on a beautiful Saturday morning is sit around selling shitty gift certificates to old people. Thank you. Good morning. What's your bid? My bid is one night in the sack with myself. Good morning. What's your bid? Hey, man, y'all should consider getting a trace on the line, man. Maybe everyone will stop calling and saying cactus. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cactus. You know, cactus pie, cactus scoop. And let's go back to the phones. Good morning. What's your bid? I want a bid on the uh, cactus. You ought to get a tracer on the line. I sell tracers. Would you like to buy one? But then they won't say cactus all the time, you know? And Tony wouldn't have to bitch. And let's go back to the phones. Good morning. What's your bid? Hi there. I'd like to bid on Denny's. Mm, I'm afraid Denny's has already been sold. Oh, fucking shit. Good morning. What's your bid? Uh, hi. I would like to bid $45 for the giant hairy monkey penis. Good morning. What's your bid? Uh, if you don't have a caller ID, I have one I can bring you because... What these people are doing to you is a federal offense, and they could go to jail. Thank you. Good morning. What's your bid? I'm bidding on the three pounds of gerbil. Thank you, Tony. Thanks to John Beaver in the control room. I apologize for our regular, to our regular listeners. I had to listen to that hour of foolishness. Join us again next week. So long, and now hang on for sports talk. 
Broadcasting from the PLA Situation Room in Roy, New Mexico. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Now it's time. On Prank Call Nation. Cactus, 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 cactus. I'm playing games. Cactus, 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 Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus, 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 this cocksucker. Cactus, 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 cactus. You've got to be crap on my ball. Cactus, 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 cactus. This is going to be a fuck job to edit. Cactus, 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 cactus. You think a tracer can stop me? You're listening to the Snowplow Show, episode 539. Today is March 21st, 2019. And this show is brought to you by Weird Shortwave Listener, Lion9, Michael F., Xander Fett, and Cody Nonami. Those are five of the people supporting the show on various things like Patreon and PhoneLosers.com and NewProject2.com. Thanks, everyone, for supporting the show and keeping the show going and getting extra shows. I did a hobo sode yesterday. It was kind of fun. And if you're not a subscriber, you missed it. Sucks to be you. Sorry, it's been a while since I haven't done a show. I mean, over the weekend, we had the Euro meet, the party time Euro meet. So you can blame party time for that. And then Monday, I was going to do a show, but I just was still exhausted from the weekend. And Tuesday, I tried to do a show. Nothing was working out, so I gave up. But the, the meetup went great. We had a really good time there. I think at least 50 people showed up. Someone was saying possibly 60, but it's hard to say really because people just were kind of coming and going and we never really took a head count. I'm thinking like on the next meetup, we need to have a guest book for everybody to sign. You know, like when you go to a funeral and there's a book of condolences and you can sign your name and where you're from and everything in there. That's what we need for the next meetup is a guest book for everybody to sign. I don't know what we'll do with it, but at least it would give us kind of a sort of accurate head count. And we need name tags. I need to write all this stuff down. I need to make a page in my notebook for future meetups. All the stuff we need to bring with us. Name tags and a guest book. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of people. I feel like I didn't really get to spend time with anyone because there's so many people there, which is exactly how I felt in Chicago. You know, it was just six hours there and then I'm driving back. So at least I was in San Jose for a whole day and a half. It's kind of insane how many PLA people I've met in real life over just the past year alone, starting with Chicago last September, and then there was Denver, and now San Jose, and now Giad, he's already planning Chicago again, and they're talking about doing it in September again, so I guess I'm going to try and make that again. We're going to do another Chicago, and if San Jose happens again next year, I'm staying for an entire week because I'm very disappointed I didn't get to hang out with people a little bit longer. Like Dwight and all of his crew, they went to Alcatraz. And I've always wanted to go to Alcatraz. I tried to go to Alcatraz 10 years ago and they were closed because of terrorism or something. But it was just a lot of fun. We hung out at a pizza place, barcade, bowling alley type thing. We didn't get a party room. We just kind of hung out at tables and they didn't kick us out. We were expecting to get kicked out. They walked by a lot and gave us snake eyes, but nobody kicked us out. So that was kind of cool. Thank you, everybody, for coming to that. Zax was the record holder for the longest distance traveled, as far as we know anyway. Nobody else claimed to be from another country. So Zax is the winner of that. Good job, Zax. And I don't know. It was great. Uh, There's pictures uh, all over Facebook, and I posted some to Twitter. And there's some video. uh, I don't know. Laugh Track Matt did a lot of video from his Airbnb. So I will do my best to link to some of the pictures and video from the event in the show notes on snowplowshow.com or maybe if i'm feeling really ambitious i can just create a slideshow and put that on the youtube version of the show i doubt i'll be feeling that ambitious though so don't count on that so let's get started with today's show i'm going to play a song here that was sent in to me by johan t this one is called ant hill this better not set off any youtube copyright alarms johan god damn it hey steve hey what steve yes um i love you even though you're a cock sucking shit master, I still love you. Yeah, Brad. What? You're going to make this into something that's a problem. Can you tell her to shut the fuck up in the background? She, she just won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> T- tell her men are talking. <laughs> uh, Brad, who is this really? It's Brad, your neighbor. I live, like, way down the street. I'm in the Red House. The Red House? Yep. Which direction? To the west. 
I, I'm just like I'm not trying to cause problems. I'm just saying that she wouldn't shut the fuck up. She just kept talking. Just tell her to shut the fuck up. Can I talk to her real quick? You, you want to talk to her? Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you talk to her. Here okay. she is. So, who's this? Hey, I, I was just telling him that you should shut the fuck up because men are talking and we were trying to have a conversation and you just kept talking. So why don't you just shut the fuck up? Well, I don't know who the fuck you are, but you're talking to my dad. And I'm walking around the house to goddamn light right now. And if I find your drone, you probably not going to have one. Oh, you, you better not mess with my drone because you'll have to pay for it. Hey, Hello. Hello, Stan. Yes. Hey, Stan. Uh, this is Mark from the city of Cedar. Uh-huh. I, I was just calling about your lawn. Um, we noticed there's a lot of Charolais poop in your lawn. You're not picking it up? There's what? There, those, there's a lot of... Uh, what What are those things you have? How are they pronounced? Charolais? The bulls or whatever? Charolais cattle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Charolais cattle poop. All over your lawn. You're not picking it up. You're supposed to keep that all cleaned up. They're not in my lawn. Well, you know, they're in the field, whatever. Same thing. You got to you gotta keep that picked up. You're making the neighborhood look bad. <laughs> Where did you get that idea? Well, no, we, we have people that, you know, enforcers that drive around and uh, they, they take no, n- note of infractions and stuff and... They they said your your field is just filled with Charlay poop. <laughs> and you need to do something. No, that's that, that's better known as fertilizer. Well, no, it's it's comes out of their butt, so it's poop. So you need to pick that up. It's fertilizer. That's what we fertilize our pastures with. You dumbass. Hey, I'm no dumbass. I work for the city, and if you don't pick this up, you're going to get fined. Well, I'm not in the city. Well, you're, you're you're technically in the city. You're in our zip code. You have a street name. You, yeah, I'll you, tell you what. You use our facilities. I'll see you in court. Oh, I, you you will if you don't start picking up your cow poop. You can't. <laughs> we we say the same thing to people that have dogs. You know, pick up after your dog. Learn how to be a responsible animal owner. Well, I'll tell you what. What? I think you're the, one of the dumbest people in the world. That's not very nice. It may not be, but you're not very nice either. At least I know how to pick up after my dog. I pick up after my dogs, too. Yeah, but you're not picking up after your Charolais. <laughs> it's almost like you're they're, mis- they're not dogs. You're, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, they're not dogs. It's almost like you're mistreating them. Like, like, are you feeding them good enough? You're not beating them or anything. They wouldn't shit if they if they didn't feed them. Well, they they would a little bit. Oh, there's just a little bit out there. No, there's a lot out there. It, it's ridiculous. The then they, we must be feeding them a lot. The enforcer sent us pictures. But it just, Why don't you it, come over here and spend a day? It just seems like you're not a responsible pet owner if if you're you know just le- leaving they the poop are out. They're not pets. You're leaving the poop they out there. They are not pets. They're kind of pets. I mean, they're they're living beings. No, they're not. They're living beings. They're not. They are, they're not damn robots. They are. They are uh, a livelihood. Yeah. Well, and pick pick are, up after your livelihood. They, you lazy bastard. What, what do you? Uh, what do you eat when you go to a restaurant? Uh, that's none of your business. Oh, the, then the poop ain't none of your business either. Oh, yes, it is, because I work for the city, and you live in the city, and you need to clean up, clean up after your pets. Well, I'll have to have a summons before I can start that. Well, why, why don't you just be a decent human being and clean up, clean up after your animals? Because I'm not a decent human being. You've well, already told me that. Obviously not. Just gonna let all that poop sit out there and make the entire neighborhood look like a bunch of hobos. <laughs> what What are you gonna do when we start putting it in a manure spreader and spread it out in the pastures? We'll give you yeah, we'll, we'll give you double fines. Will you really? Oh yeah, yeah. You you I'm just try it and see what happens. 
motherfucker. About that. Yep. Wow. That's right. That's quite a deal. You don't mess with the city. You don't mess with the farmers either. Oh, yeah? Uh, you you want to fight? Well, yeah, I'm ready. All right, you're going to get it. Court. Yeah, yeah, you will. See you in court. You better pay your fines. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I love you. <laughs> so what, love makes you giggle? How the hell can you love me whenever you want to... Uh, Sue me and do all kinds of Because I like love that. my fellow human, you know? Just just accept it. I love my cattle, too. No, you don't. You don't even pick up after them. You make them walk around and shit out there. <laughs> anyway, I love you. Oh, Say it back. Boy. Say it back. I will not. No, you better. Not to somebody that's trying to treat me like that. No, I'm with the city, and I command you to tell me that you love me. Say it. What an asshole. He mistreats his animals and he won't even tell me he loves me. So I've got this list here that Austin sent me uh, a couple of years ago, I guess, of Charolais breeders. Uh, I'm, I know I keep saying that wrong. I think he pronounced it a different way. It's a type of cattle. Charolais, maybe. I don't know. He knew what I was talking about. That's all that matters. But I was thinking it'd be funny to call some of these people up and call them out about leaving shit all over their lawns. Like, maybe I'll just call as a neighbor instead of the city, see if they take it more seriously. Hello. Hello, Wallace? Yes? Hey, it's uh, Brad. I live down the street from you. Oh, okay. How you doing? Pretty good. That's good. Hey, um, I, I noticed, uh, you know, you have that field out there with all those charolais? Yes. But you never pick up after them. Like, there's just there's just poop everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, why, why don't you pick up after your charlies? Oh, that's there to yeah, fertilize I, the ground. Well, no, it's 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 poop. Like you're making yeah. you're you're making the neighborhood look bad is what I'm saying. Like, you know, I have friends that come over and they drive by your place and they're like, "Oh my god, look at that guy. He doesn't pick up after his charlies." Well, I don't know anybody that picks up after him. Well, that doesn't make it right. I mean, it, it's gross. Like, it, it's just it's just out there. If you get out of your car, you can smell it. Like, like pick up after your animals. Be a responsible animal owner. That's not ex the accepted procedure, sir. I'm trying to figure out who you are or whether you're joking or what, what you're doing. No, I, I'm not because joking. The, there's the, nobody that picks up after them. Well, and it... it the idea, the whole deal is when we quit feeding there, we'll come in and drag that and scatter that out oh, and that's, fertilize that ground. That's the whole purpose well, of doing that. That's just gross. Like, why don't you just pick up, pick up after him? Go out there with the pooper scooper and, like... like well, it, that's what, all I'd do for the rest of my life if I did that. Yeah, well, well like, if you, can't, if you can't take care of the animals, then don't have animals. You know, like well, that's not what I expected, and I just told you what the normal procedure is, and what all the other farmers are doing. Yeah, but you're just making the entire neighborhood look bad. Cause, oh, not cause... really. I've been living here longer than you have. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, I do. I I doubt it. But anyway, like uh, that doesn't even matter. Like you should be a decent human being and take care of your pets. Pick up after them. Well, you know, you're the first person that ever made that request. Well, I'm surprised. Seems like somebody like like somebody should have done this a long time ago. Well, do you think my Tell neighbors down the road ought to do that? Uh, don't worry about your neighbors down the road. Just just you know, take care of your own lawn. Because I I live I live the closest to you, and I have friends that come no, over. No, I and don't it's, think you do. It's embarrassing. Like they drive by and they look out there and where they're do like, you live? Just up the road. Where? A uh, uh, county road. Just up the road to the west. You live across the creek? Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Like, I'll, I'm the one that has the lawn that doesn't have, like, a bunch of cattle shit all over it. Because I, I pick up after my animals. I'm a good pet owner. Well, good for you. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you should, uh, you know, try and do the same. Well, I'm going to do what they tell me I'm supposed to do. And that would be to work that into the soil so that it helps the soil. 
It doesn't help the soil. It, it makes it so your grass looks gross. You should get true green out there. Not in, not in reality, Brad. You don't know what you're talking about. No, you, you should. they use cattle manure to fertilize all the time. You should use true green. You know, get true green out there to, to get out there and, and make your grass nicer. And maybe that'll give you some pride in your lawn and you'll pick up your cow shit. Well, I'm sorry you don't like it, Brad, but uh, I don't. I haven't figured out who you are. And when you say you've lived there longer than I have, I just seriously doubt that. But you can't even tell me where you live. So yeah, I did. Uh, uh, you like you no, don't need. You didn't. I asked you where, and you said you were my next neighbor. I live. Well, you're not because I know both my neighbors. I live in the blue house. I'm the one with the nice lawn, and I have to drive by your lawn like every day, and I have to look over there and just see those that gross cattle poop out there everywhere that you never pick up because you're lazy no you're not right about that either you ca- probably work as many hours as you do or more you're kind of lazy oh you're it's always a competition with you you've lived here longer than me you work harder than me you don't know anything about me that's right and you don't know anything about me well i know that you don't pick up your cow shit well that's right i don't i, I spread it because you're lazy like all other people do it's lazy. Do you do that in your own bathroom, too? You sp- just spread your shit all over the walls? No, I put it out on the grass. It makes it grow. Well, that's disgusting. You're, you're like an animal. You're a filthy animal is what you are. Well, I'm glad you think so, Brad. I don't think so. I know so. Well, that's your problem, not mine. I was just hoping you could be a good neighbor and pick up a- after your pets. Well, I, I, I figure that my actual neighbors understand and work with us on stuff and not don't call and tell people they're stupid and they're dumb and they're lazy i'm not i never called you stupid i just said you were dumb and lazy that's all well i don't think i'm either one and you can check with my actual neighbors that live next door and they're not going to tell you i'm that way well i am just because i live further down the road doesn't mean i'm not your neighbor i have to drive by your house all the time and i have well, friends i'm real sorry you don't like my house and the way i take care of my stuff I'm real sorry. I've got work to do, so I've got to go. What kind of work? Probably not picking up cow poop, is it? You're right. It's not. Why not? Like, what if I, what if I buy you a pooper scooper and you can just go out there and pick up after him? Uh, you, you know something, Brad? I already got a manure fork, and I'm not going to use it out there. Why not? Because like, I got more important things to do. We're finished now. Because you're lazy. Because you're being lazy. So lazy. Hello. Hello, Charles? Yes. Hey, uh, this is Brad. I'm your neighbor. I live down the street. Yes. And I have a small problem. Okay. Uh, I was walking around in your field uh, last night, and I stepped in Charolais shit. Like, you, I I guess you have Charolais, right? Yes. Yeah, you don't pick up after them. I was walking through the field, and I stepped in shit. Oh, bummer. Got all over my shoes. (laughs) It's kind of bullshit. Yeah. Well, it's not, yeah. it's not funny. It's a new pair of shoes. They, they're, it was like some of those new self-lacing shoes. They're, they're like $300 shoes. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like, why don't you pick up after your pets? Who is this? This is Brad. I live down the street, like a mile or so. I live in the Blue House. I'm not following you. Okay. I, I was in your field last night. and I In my field? Yeah, yeah. I went over the fence, and I was walking around in your field, and I stepped in Charolais shit. Okay. So what's the joke here? There's no joke. I just, like, can you at least apologize? No. You're in my field, right? Yeah, but, like, you don't even pick up after your pets. Like, it, it's everywhere. Like, I stepped in it twice. Who? All right, just a minute. Where do you live at? Down the street, like to the... Down what street? Down, route, like, you know, like to the north. There's no north on route. No, I mean like on the north side. I'm down, down the west on the north side. To the west on the north side? Yeah, like, you know, it would be across the street instead of on the same side. It doesn't even matter. I'm just saying I was... Yeah, in, it does, because I'm trying to figure out where you're at. It doesn't... I don't think you even got, no, got it, the right person here. No, I'm sure I do. Like, like you, you live at four... Yeah, what's your last name, Brad? Carter. Look, Brad I, Carter. I'm just asking, can you please clean up after your Charolais? No. 
because it, it's gross. Like, you, you know, people drive by and they look over there and like, oh my God, look at this guy. He doesn't even clean up after his pets. All right, you're to the west on... It doesn't matter. Like, you're, you're missing the point. Hey, pal. Yeah, I'm missing the point. You're trespassing on private land. What the hell are you doing over there? I'm going to come and see you. That's what I want to do. No, I don't want you to come and see me. I want you to pick up yeah, your... Yeah, yes, I am. Pick up the damn cow shit out of your lawn. Fuck you, buddy. I don't know who the hell you are or what you're doing. You're wasting my time. There's no blue house down the road on highway from me. You're wasting my time. I, I, I spent, like, three hours cleaning my shoes. Like, well, you, then you, you stay the hell off of private land. Well, clean up your private land so I don't step yeah, in cow shit. Everybody. He he muttered something there while I was yelling at him, but I didn't hear what it was. I was hoping he'd get more pissed that I keep calling his cattle as pets, but nobody seems to care about that except that first guy. Hello. Hey, Marvin? Yes. Hey, it's Doug. I live down the street from you. Who is it? It's Doug. Sensei Doug. Um, what house do you live in? I can't place you. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, I was just wondering, like, you know how you have all those charolais out in the field? Mm-hmm. Uh, every time I drive by, they're always looking at me. They like you. N- no, because th- they're giving me snake eyes. Oh, really? Yeah, like every time, every single time. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and when my wife drives by, they don't look at her like that. They don't look at me like that. So I just want to know what their problem is. That's a good question. Well, can can you make him stop? I know they just like you better than they do her. Well, can, can you please make him stop? Well, I can uh, I can tell him to. i not. Doesn't mean they will. Yeah, I'd appreciate it because I I don't know what their problem is. I, I'm I'm not doing anything. I'm not looking at them. They're You're just, innocent. Yeah, yeah. They're just looking at me every time. Well, that's that's not right. Yeah. There ought to be a law against that. There should be, but I, I mean, I know it's your property. I was just hoping you could be nice and get them to, to cut it out or keep them inside in the daytime or something. Well, that's a possibility. Yeah. Because they, they shouldn't be crossing over the line like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sick of it. So, yeah. If you Understandably. Could, if you could do something about that, I'd appreciate it. You bet. We'll take care of it now. Don't, don't have no fear. All right, thank you so much. You bet. It's good to hear from you. Uh huh. Yeah. T- I'll talk to you later. I don't know if I could get anyone to take that one seriously. Maybe though. Hello. Hey, Mike. Hello. Mike. Yeah. It- it's uh, it's Brad. I live down the road from you. Uh yeah. Yeah. Um. Like I keep whenever I drive by there, uh, you're always out there. You're always looking at me. You're always, okay. you're always like just looking at me when I drive by and give me snake eyes. What's your problem? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, every time I drive by in the car, you're, it's like you're just always standing out there just waiting for me to drive by and you're looking at me. Uh, on the highway. Yeah, yeah. And the last week, uh, you were winking your butthole at me. And I, like, that's not cool. You know, sometimes my kids are in the car. And, you know, I don't just, know what you're talking about. I'm just tra- I really don't. I'm just trying to drive home. I'm just trying to get home. I just I live down the road. And I don't need you looking. I don't. At- I, I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. Look, I just don't need you looking at me whenever I drive by. That's all. It's no big deal. I'm not. I'm not looking at anybody. Th- then why are you always just? Know. Why are you always out there giving me snake eyes? I have no idea what you're talking about. That it's you've obviously got me confused with somebody else. No, it's definitely you. Box one. Th- it's yeah. not me. What time are you talking about? Because I'm hardly ever even home before dark. Well, it's weird that every time I happen to drive by, you're just standing out there looking at me. And you're you're. Da- well, I'm not standing out in the yard. You're damn. I don't. You have all those all those charolais, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're always. But I don't have any. I don't have any charolais where I'm at. I know. It's just you out there. You're just always out there looking at me. Like, no. Look, can, can you just not do it anymore? Like, you don't have to... I'm not trying to get you to confess or anything. Can you just stop, though? I'm not going to... Well, I haven't did anything to confess to, so there you go. Well, can you apologize at least? If I did something, I would sure apologize, sir, but I don't know who you are, to be quite honest. Uh, it's it's Brad. I just I live just down the road a little bit. Way down I, the road. I drive the red car. 
I don't even know a red car, to be quite honest about it. What are you always looking at it for, then? Like, you must know it. You're always looking at it. You've obviously got me mixed up with somebody else. No, I'm sure it's you. It's like you're, you're the one. You're, you're, yeah, it's definitely you. Like you're, you're well, the, I'll tell you what. The next time I'm doing it, why don't you just pull in, and uh, that way I know who you are, and I'll know what the hell I'm doing. Well, you'll, you'll probably just deny it then, too, like you are right now. You won't even apologize. Well, I don't know that I'm doing anything. I haven't, I'm telling you, here's the deal. I haven't been home before dark, before late at night, and I don't know who the hell you are. Then, then why are you looking at me if you don't even know who I am? And, and then, well, I'm not. And also, you're winking your butthole at me one day, and that, that's just not cool at all. Well, that's not happening. That has never happened. Oh, I it, def- promise you it that. definitely did. I have a dash cam. I have it all on my dash cam. That's fine. You bring it. Uh, bring it to what? I'm. I'm not gonna like try and sue you or anything. I just. I was hoping you could stop looking at me and stop winking your butthole at me. Well, I really don't know what you're talking about. So. Okay. Sure, you don't. Whatever. And you're not gonna apologize. If I'd have done something, I would. Well, you, you're looking at me. That's what you did. I already told you what you did. All right, just, I gotta go. Just say you're sorry. Okay. Can you just say you're sorry, no. please? Please not if not if not if I knew if I knew who you were or what I was because I haven't done any of this period not happened Th- then why are you looking at me you're always looking at me and winking your butthole nope all uh, right I gotta go man all right where, where are you going what are you doing that's kind of none of your business well you brought it up I'm just being neighborly because we, we're neighbors we we should get along we shouldn't have to just you know stare each other down and give each other snake eyes uh. Yeah. All right, bye. Seems kind of shady. He won't tell me what he's doing. Very sketchy person. Hello. Hello, Kevin. This is Larry. Oh, I'm sorry. That yeah, that's who I'm trying to call, Larry. And I'm calling from the city here at the city of Crane. Okay. And, yeah. And I'm I'm with the air quality control board. Um. Mm-hmm. We just we noticed that your charolais are putting out a lot of methane into the air, and we're going to need you to capture all that uh, capture all that methane and store uh, it. What? That your your charolais? You have charolais in crane? Yeah, yeah. I'm with the air quality control board. It's just uh, your. I don't live in crane. Oh, settle down. Don't yell at me. Jesus Christ. Hey, wait a minute. I don't live in Crane. I know, but we take care of the air quality in all the surrounding areas. I'm just saying you need okay. to uh, capture all the methane that your charolais are producing and store it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to yell, but I'm getting ready to. Uh-oh. What are you talking about, though? Well, you, you keep... My what? You keep a bunch I of... I live sh- on a farm. Right. You keep a bunch of charolais, right? Am I pronouncing that right? I ain't no Charlie, white cattle, huh? Yeah, yeah. They produce a lot of methane, and as as okay. a part of the Paris Agreement, we we uh, you need to uh, you know we're, we're trying to reduce the amount of methane that we release into the atmosphere. So you need to figure out a way to capture all the methane that they produce. You just st- well, you know that's it. fertilized. Yeah, yeah. You need to you need to put that in barrels or something, and and figure out a waste disposal place to you know ship it to. I didn't know I had so much. I just got 30 cows. Yeah, yeah, that produces a lot of methane. Puts it all in the atmosphere. Okay. Who how, who else is getting this call? Oh, everybody. Yeah, I, I just I was trying to call that uh, Kevin guy. That's why I had the wrong name here. I've got quite a list. But, yeah, you've got to figure out a way to capture all that methane that they produce. Like, figure out how much methane each one produces individually and uh, well, capture that I've, much. Yeah, I, I'll let... Uh, I'll let the government figure it out because I don't know and I don't have any way of doing it. Oh, no, you've got to do it. Don't be lazy about it. You know, we all got to pull together and help the environment. It doesn't matter well, what... The doesn't envir- matter. Hey, the environment in my place is fine. I don't have any smells. Yeah, but, you know, you're, it's, that's because it's going into everyone else's yards. It's going up in the, up in the air. It's, just, it's smelling up the whole world, basically. You're, done, you're, you're damn Charolais. Okay, well, I'm sorry. You but, should be. Uh, I'll do the best. I, I'll do the best I can. Okay, you're gonna need to get some barrels and start like uh, just capturing all that methane. 
Like clean up your. Oh, <laughs> he promised me he was gonna yell at me, and then he didn't. I feel really cheated out of that one. Yes. Listen here, Larry. You don't hang up on the air quality control board. Okay. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. About to talk to me then. Well, it doesn't matter if you, if you like hate the earth and you want to pollute the environment. I'm just telling you what's. Requ- I'm not. I'm not polluting anything. Yes, you are. Your your Charolais are. And you own what them. What do you want me to do? Sell them? No, don't sell them. Just capture all. The, capture all the methane, idiot. Hey, you're the idiot. Don't call me back. I've well, raised cattle for sixty years, and I've never heard of such a stupid thing. But, but <laughs> all right, that was better. I'm happy with Larry now. I'll mark him off my list. Hello. Hi, is this Mrs. Mueller? Yes. Hey there, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up here in space. Yes. Yes. How, how are you doing? I'm good. That's good to hear. Um, I needed to let you know uh, we're flying right. Up, you know, we're above the Earth right now, but we're right above your your uh, farm there with all the yes. sh- Charolais. Yes. And we're going to be uh, beaming down electromagnetic energy under your fields and try to control where they move. Really? Yeah, yeah. We're going to try and uh, get them to uh, walk around, like, march in circles and, you know, do, like, uh, just kind of... You're going to notice them You're going to notice them behaving very erratically for the next couple... No, you better not be doing something like that. Oh, no, it's it's perfectly safe. You know, Charolais, they're able to sense electromagnetic energy. Like, I'm sure... No. No, I'm sure no. You've, you've probably noticed... No. They poop on a north to south axis. No. No, they they do. Like pay attention. They... You are like crazy. I'm sorry. What? I'm going to call the Better Business Bureau. I'm going to call somebody. Goodbye. No, ma'am, ma'am. I I just I just are you there? Hello, ma'am, ma'am. What? I, I, I just I we've already started the experiment. We're we're beaming down electromagnetic energy as we speak. We're just we're gonna make them ma'am? Oh, I think she was trying to pick up to make another call. Um there's there's two numbers on here, so maybe the second one will reach her husband who isn't around her right now. I can't believe she believed that. That's the first time I tried that idea and she's just like, No, don't do it. Stop beaming electromagnetic inner. Oh, hello, Jeff? No, he's not home yet. Oh, uh, who's this? Fuck! Alright, I guess I guess we're done with that one, but whoever that other lady was, she's going to be calling the Better Business Bureau on the International Space Station. Hopefully she can find their listing with the Better Business Bureau. Hello? Hello, Dennis? Yes. Hey there, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. Okay. And I'm calling to let you know we're above your farm right now. We're above your field. And you know all those Charolais you have out there? Yeah. We're going to make them uh, walk uh, wherever we want. We're going to like try and control their movement. Through electromagnetic energy. I, I just didn't want you to be concerned if you noticed them behaving erratically. And where, where, where do you think I'm located at? Uh, on Highway... Yeah, that's where my son lives. Oh, yeah. I don't, I'm sorry. We have your number here. But he has the Charolais, right? Yeah, we both... Yeah, they're fine, but that's where he lives. Oh, well, why don't you keep him on your own property? Uh, he lives at the house, is all I'm saying. I see. Well, anyway, we're going to control the movements of the Charolais from space using electromagnetic waves. Can you call, Okay. Can you call up your son and let him know that we're going to be doing that? And, like, for him not to be concerned if they're out there, you know, moving in formations that are unusual? Okay. Or, or should I call him directly? If you have his number, I'll call him up. Sure, it's eight one five. 
Oh, two, two, oh, one, one digit off from yours. And how do you think you're going to control these cows is what I'd like to know. Oh, it, through electromagnetic energy. Uh, you know, they, they can see uh, magnetic waves in the earth. And we're just going to introduce, uh, you know, artificial ones and use it to control them. We can basically make them dance if we want to. Uh-huh. And how are you calling me from space? Because uh, we have phones in space. It's very high-tech up here. Uh-huh. I'm reaching you through a tr- transponder down there on the ground. That's why I have a local caller ID. Okay. Mr. Doubtful? I'm pretty doubtful. Yeah, it seems like it. Any? Okay, have fun. Well, here, I'm going to call your son on three-way. I'm, I'm, I'm putting him through, because we have the technology up here in space to make three-way calls. Hello? Yeah, I got that technology. It, Darren? It's uh, not Darren. Oh, Zach. Dennis? I don't know. Charlotte person? Yeah. I, 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 Charlotte? I, I have your father on the phone. Uh, he told me to give you a call about your your Charolais. Who you got on the phone? Your father. Dennis? I guess. I don't know. I can't keep up with all these names. You have them like, on the list backwards, but I'm calling you from... Hey, Zach. Z- yeah. Zach. What are we talking about? Yeah. All right, this dude says he's going to make your cows walk to dance. Going to make them what? I'm calling from the dance. internet. I'm calling from the International Space Station up here in space. This is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. Okay. I'm an astronaut. We're going to be beaming down electromagnetic energy into your field here in a few minutes, and it's going to make your charolais behave erratically. Okay, what does that mean? Well, I just didn't want you to be concerned. They're, they're going to walk around in formations. They're going to okay. be they're going to be like Nazi soldiers. Basically, okay. they're they're going to they, just don't be concerned. It's not hurting them. It's just uh, we're just directing them where to move. Okay. It's like we're mobilizing them. Shit! I wish I was there. I'd go watch this. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 going to be quite a sight. Is there anybody at your place right now that's going to notice this? There's no one there right now, but I actually might turn around and go back. Okay, yeah, you might want to, like, you can film it, it's fine. Uh, they're, they're just, for the next two hours, we're going to control their movements. Okay, you're talking about the, up there by the house, I guess? Yeah, the Charolais. You're at- okay, the white one. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess I'll go back and make sure nothing happens, but oh, no, no, you're no. saying it, it shouldn't. No, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to control their movements. We're going to make them march around uh, in a straight line around the field, uh, following each other, and uh, you know, drop into formation, and you know, uh, you know, they're just going to do various different tricks. It's it's like a new thing we're working on with uh, electromagnetic okay. energy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So all just right. just so you're aware of it, that that's that's all that's going on. It's completely safe. All right. I will. Uh I'll see what happens. Okay. Thank you, Zach. Ha- have a nice day. Thanks for serving your country. Yep, you do. Thank you. And, and Dennis, thanks for being a doubtful asshole, but, you know, you gave me his number at least. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right. Bye, both of you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> All right. Two people in a row believed it. Well, I mean, the first guy sort of didn't believe it, but his son sure believed it. And, and, and he's going back to watch this happen. He's going to be, like, standing out there and just wondering, like, well, those two are sort of walking the same way. I wonder if they're being controlled. I should have told him we were going to fly some of them up into the air and stuff. Man, I kind of want to do that again, just because, like, why are they all believing it? I didn't think farmers would believe the whole International Space Station thing. I thought they'd be like, we ain't got nothing up there in space. There's no space station. That's all fake. Oh, wait, I have a better idea. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn on the helicopter noise. Oh, that's too loud. Hello. Hello, Doug? Yeah. Hey, uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm a pilot. I'm in a helicopter above your field right now. Okay. And I'm calling to let you know we're going to be uh, testing out a new harness. 
Uh, we're gonna lower it down and pick up one of your Charolais. Uh, well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for your permission. Uh, who is this? <laughs> uh, Steve Dave, I'm a pilot. Okay. All right. And how do you know me? I do not. I just looked in the, you know, in the directory and called you up. Gotcha. All so right. Where are you? Where are you from? I'm from Leonard, Missouri. Anyway, I gotta go test out this harness. I'm gonna pick up some of your Charolais now. I probably wouldn't do that. Why isn't? Why not? Uh, just probably wouldn't. Why not? Like, why can't I? Why? What? You'd probably get shot. You'd probably be shot, first off. Oh, no, you better not shoot at us. We're in a helicopter. You, 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 that'd kill us. We, like, you know, fall to the ground. <laughs> it never bothered me any. Yeah, well, you know, you're not allowed to shoot us. I doubt you could even shoot that good anyway. We're pretty high up. You're probably a bad shot. Gotcha. Well, you're probably not allowed to do what you're doing either, so we're even. No, it's cool. Like, I, I, that's why I'm calling, just to let you know. We're going to be uh, just picking up several of them. We're just, you know, testing it out. We're going to pick up one and set them down, pick up another, set them down. So just don't be concerned about it. We're just, we're just testing out this harness. Well, I guess probably test it out somewhere else. Uh, no, no, we're gonna we're already above your field. We're just gonna it's not gonna take that long. Just ten minutes, okay? Uh, well, you didn't really have permission to do that. Yeah, but we're already here, so just just I'm well, not, that's I'm, asking. <laughs> I'm not asking. Already I'm not asking permission. I'm just I just didn't want you to be concerned if you saw one of your Charlies flying around. Oh, well, you don't have any permission to do that, though. I'm not asking for permission. I'm just letting you know. Well, you, sh you should ask for permission. <laughs> well, I'm not going to. We're going to do this. Well, then you may then you may be shot at. Well, no, you're not allowed to shoot at us. That, that's against the law to shoot at a helicopter with people in it. But well, it's against the law to do what you're doing to my cows, too. Yeah, but, you know, Without like you're, you're talking about... You're talking about murder. You're, you're, you're going to shoot us down and make us crash. Well, you're talking about murdering my cows, and that's my livelihood. I'm not murdering your cows. It's completely safe. We're just testing out a new harness, that's all. What, are you an idiot? Yeah. Are you an idiot? No, I said, are you an idiot? You're acting like an idiot. I asked, are you an idiot? Uh, you didn't answer my question. Are you an idiot? Uh... I'm not going to answer your question. Look, I gotta go. We're gonna pick up these Charolais now. But they'll be safe. You do it you do at your you do at your own risk. I'm just telling you. Do you know what they're worth? Uh, I don't really care. I don't give a shit. But we'll be careful with them. We're not gonna drop them. We're just gonna pick them up. And who is this and who is this again? Steve Dave. I'm a helicopter pilot. My, What's your name? Steve Dave, and my co-pilot here, he's going to be the one actually lowering the harness, you know, pulling the levers and stuff. And Who, the, Who's your co-pilot? Uh, it's uh, Chad. And Chad never makes mistakes. Chad, Chad who? It doesn't matter. Look, I gotta go. Look, we're going to pick up your Charolais now. Well, good luck. Okay, you don't have to be such an asshole you about it. You, do not, you don't have permission. I know, I know, you're being an asshole, we don't have permission, whatever. Yeah, well, you're being an asshole too, so thanks for wanting to know one, then. Yeah, but you're being more of an asshole. Yeah, I pride myself on being the best. Anyway, I gotta go, it's been fun talking to you, but not really. Not really, which field are you over right now? Yours, look, I gotta go, we, we're low on fuel. Which, which, we're low which on field, then? Look, we're low on fuel, I gotta go. I gotta go. Bye. Adios. Alright, bye, honey. Well, there we go. I'm, I'm tired of hearing the helicopter noise, so I'm not gonna do that one anymore. I tried that one a few different times before anybody would believe me. I'm still not sure if that guy believed me. Probably not. I think that's gonna be the end of today's calls, though. I almost finished this list, but I'm gonna go back over it again, because quite a few people didn't answer today and the other night when I called from this list. Thanks once again to Austin 
for sending in this paper list. It's paper. It's a physical list. He mailed it to me in the mail like a damn hobo. But it's a list of Charolais breeders. And they're kind of fun to talk to. They sound like the type of people that Devin always reaches on her show. Hey, Brad. I was watching you, um, your live stream earlier when you walked to the car mm-hmm. and all that. Um, I just want to let you know you got to pull up your socks, man. What are you doing? You're a public figure. You can't be walking around like that. Oh, pull them up right now. Was I even wearing right, socks? Thank you. Did you do it? Yeah, yeah, I, I did it, Cody Nonami. Thanks for letting me know that I didn't pull up my socks. Hey, Brad, it's Crimson. How's it going? I'm Great. just checking in. And yes, I still hear it in your voice, Brad. Every time that a female caller calls in on the voicemails, you're like, ooh, oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi, yeah. this is Brad. Oh, yeah. Oh. Maybe, maybe you're just comparing it to when you call in, and I'm just completely annoyed with your voicemail. Maybe that's what you're comparing it a to. voicemail from, ooh, a favorite female, ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's I still me. hear Brad. Just don't that's me. It. Anyway, hey, Brad, uh, next, uh, next time you're looking for an idea, here's, here's a great idea for you. I know you love ideas in the voicemail. Uh, call, like, uh, like, psychologists or psychiatrists or whatever, and or therapist offices of some sort and call and say, hey, is this the therapist's office? And they say, yeah, yeah, it is. And then you just immediately break right into your, you know, laying out all your life's problems. Yeah. And, you know, if they try to interrupt you, just say, oh, let, let me finish, let me finish. Like, I don't know how to talk to girls. You know, mom, I get nervous. You know, she never really hugs me much. I get so excited up, when they talk to blah, blah, me. Blah. You know, just draw from your own life. Okay, Crimson, I'll do that. Thanks. Hey, Brad, it's good on your skis. Uh, I just, I, I really just want to apologize for the last message. I, I don't want to ruin any any chances. The one I didn't play. I, I totally am not in Albany, Oregon. Okay. Um, I'm just... Oh, man. Carol, please. Stop playing with me, baby. Well, I guess I don't have to play your other message since you just summarized it in this message. So I'll go ahead and delete that one. Thank you for helping out with that. Hey, Brad. That... Uh, one well, pressing button, but you say the press. Well, that ain't fucking working. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I first. Know. Um, back I guess I need to change the message, don't press, I? I press it five, six times, and it freaking doesn't work. Yep, it used to. You're like, Google changed stop something. Stop telling me to press that one button, because I press it like five or six times. Yeah, we've been over this. And I tell you Sorry. what. Sorry. You a badass motherfucker, and I say so myself. All Love right. your show. Your show freaking awesome. Thanks. And I tell you what. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Thanks for the message. Bye, man. What the hell today? All right. I'm gonna go into my options on the voicemail and see if something got switched around. And I don't see any option like that that says you know allow or disallow pressing one during the messages. So darn, it seems like there used to be an option, but Google Voice took away a lot of the options. So I guess I just need to re-record the message and maybe make it shorter since nobody can skip the message anymore. What's up, Brad? This is your boy, Depressed Mashed Potatoes. Hey. Um, I've been listening to your show for quite a while. This is the first time I ever called in. Mm. But I had an idea for you from the tenants from help. Uh, you know those air diffusers, like you can put essential oil in them? Mm. I was thinking what you should do is you should tell the uh, people when you call them that you put like paint in it or something like that or maybe something like a uh, fart smell or a vomit smell because you got some weird kind of fetish all yeah. right keep up the good work and uh thanks for the last anytime paint in the air filters what a great idea or farts man there was no voicemails on saturday i guess because we were all at the meetup on saturday well baby mom's here and i wanted to let you know that i love the PLA. I'm ready to show a cactus up my ass for you. All right, except for that one. That was the only one from Saturday. Hey, Roy and Miguel B. I'm looking at Snowplow Show, April 19, 2014, minute 108. OMG. Bye. I'm not going to do it, but everyone else should go listen to the April 19th, 2014 episode. Minute 108, OMG. Apparently something really amazing's in there. Thanks, Miguel B., for that. Hey, Brad, it's Dr. Och. I, I had a funny idea. Okay. Next time what you call it? a shopping center or stores in the shopping center, mm-hmm. or actually next time you call people, instead of being an HOA, you should call them from a shopping center and say that you're the uh, 
uh, neighborhood order control. And when you saw them at the shopping center, they didn't put their cart away and you're calling to let them know that they need to go and put it back or they're not allowed to shop there anymore. You yeah. can call from Walmart, you can call from an deal. HOA, or you could you could call a Sensei Doug. Uh, it would be what if they don't shop there though? Call and say, hey, I saw that you didn't put your shopping cart away when you were at the grocery store. Yeah. If you want to shop there again, you got it. Maybe back. I should find people that have checked into to stores and tell them that so I know that they've been at the store. Be like, you just left your shopping cart in your parking space, you lazy motherfucker. Brad, it's a Red Eagle, all formerly known as King Cobra. Okay. Um, just want to let you know when the year is 2037 and I get inaugurated as president of these United States, mm -hmm. my first order of action will be to pardon Brad Carter. He is oh. an American hero. Thank you. He did absolutely nothing wrong, and just that is all. So yeah. just to let you know that... May he rest in peace. If, if it does happen, I'm going to look to fulfill that promise. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Red Eagle. Away. I appreciate it pardoning me after I'm dead. Hey Brad, it's me again. I guess your number is still not fucking working. You know, pressing one still yeah. doesn't do Shut shit. Up. Shut up. Also, um, also Brad, I guess I made a big old fucking mistake by calling in and offering up show ideas that just was over yeah. an over a minute. But what the hell? you're okay with yeah, this one's a minute and a half. Other people doing over just, a minute. Just saying. I guess not people. You know, who I guess has a show presence. I, I, I see how it is, yep, Brad. That's what it is. I I guess I, I should never call back in anymore. Yeah. Sorry, Brad. That'd be for Sorry the best. I agree. Oh, yeah. By the way, I started watching... You're really Ultimate depressing. Confusion ...recently, and uh, it's fucking hilarious. It's helped me go to sleep, and um, it's really brightening up my day in this really fucking weird time. Also, my boy, we need... Uh, like, we need to get, uh, we need to get all of y'all on a good, like, exercise plan, man. Like, Brad, I think, I think, I think you're, like, the skinniest one out of, out of them all. I and don't yet, think so. Even though, man, like, I think, I think you could get, like, super duper ripped, man. Yep. I think you have the potential, man. Let's, Probably. Let's, uh, let's push you over to that edge. Let's work on Anyways, that. Anyways, I hope you have a great time at the San Jose shit. Uh -huh. um, yeah, no, thanks. I'm not calling you fat. I'm calling you perfect, okay? <laughs> kinda, I want to make kinda you did. honest, all right? You kind of called all of us uh, fat. Uh, keep up the great work. Sorry, this is probably over an over a minute. Yeah, it's a Fuck minute and a half. What the hell? Asshole. Anyways, love you. This guy expects a bunch of internet nerds to be ripped for some reason and not be fat. And what's he talking about anyway? This is on a Friday that he left this message. That's before the meetup even happened, before I was even there. So where is he seeing pictures of us all at the meetup? Hi, Brad, RB, hey. Red, Chili Pepper, okay. Box Boy, yep. fucking retarded boy. It's Rico Rocks here. So now I'm fat um, and retarded. I, to, I see how yeah, it is. I an old joke. I know the old joke goes, there was two fish in a tank, was the one fish is another. How do we drive this thing? But, but what? No, there. No, I have a part two to that joke. Oh, okay, sorry. There were two soldiers shoot my in load. a tank. What did the other soldier say to the other soldier? Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Stay positive. All right. Thanks for the voicemail. Great joke. I really enjoyed it. Hey, Brad. This hey. is a first-time caller. Uh, from uh, Louisiana, and I was just listening to episode 538, and the voicemail some other dude was calling from uh, the 504, which is New Orleans, and Ooh. I'm just trying to get a gauge on all your Louisiana listeners. I think it's just you two. That there's probably some out there, so... Probably. Fucking shit. We need to have a meetup. Call the call in here. I don't fucking know. Let's do it. Anyway, Cactus Cactus. Let's have a meetup in Louisiana next, and we'll figure it out. But yeah, I don't hear a lot of people from Louisiana. Hey, Brad. Just calling on in from Tempe, Arizona. Hey. First thing, just thought you ought to know that. that yeah, stop it. The voice stop. Is, like, broken, so you have to listen to the whole thing. Not that you... It's Google's it fault. Matter, but not. In case it's nothing I did. Fix that, I guess. Other thing was, all the prank calls... The, the voice changers are 
really funny, so you should do lots of those. Okay. And what are you that. saying? You hate my voice, and I need to change it with the voice changer? Only. I just only do. Else I'm fat Santa and calls, retarded. Calls and Carol calls. And then I guess every now and then you can use your regular voice to do some say Doug calls. But oh, well, thanks just, for permission. I, mean, I really love the, the voice changer. Anyway, cactus, cactus. Hey, Brad. It's Teen Wolf Jesus. Hey. I wanted to call after you made that uh, fucking epic call to my coworker last week. Like, I couldn't believe you made it that fast, but <laughs> yeah. holy shit. So she was off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All right, so the people who don't have hobo soda access probably don't know what Teen Wolf Jesus is talking about, but he had me prank call a coworker of his, and she was completely insane. It was a lot of fun, and I'm too lazy to go find a clip of it right now, but I guess this is the aftermath story of that prank call. Like, you called her on Thursday, and I'm friends with her niece, and apparently it was massive drama all around the other house because they couldn't figure out who would call them. They couldn't figure out who would tell their kids to shut the fuck up, <laughs> and so, like, it was an utter like abomination of a shit show around their family well she came to work yesterday it's awesome i was talking to her and i asked her how her weekend was and so i started trying to coax out of uh out of her you know things that might have happened and then she started talking about this weird call that she got she got really 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 pissed off talking about it um i wish i could have recorded it but anyway like it was oh, damn beautiful it. why She's didn't you talking about her own work a lot of people know about it so that just totally made my week so thank you for that, and uh, Anytime. I wish I could play this fucking call for everybody, but I will get fired. So thanks yeah. again. Talk to you soon. Well, you're already Bye. playing it for one coworker, and I think you said online that you played it for a relative of hers or something. Seems like it's only a matter of time before she hears it. Please try not to get fired because of me. That makes me feel shitty. Hey Brad, I am calling you from an airport payphone in the... San Francisco Airport. Whoa. Guess what? I'm traveling to Salt Lake City. But, so but who are you? You will be getting a call from a Salt Lake City Airport phone. Whoa. Hey, phone. I think that this phone takes incoming calls. Um, I think the number should show up, but if it doesn't, it is 650-821-6990. 69. Bye. But it's not. It's 9690. I mean, that's what the caller ID says. 650-821-9690. And I don't see any messages in here from a Salt Lake City area code. So either he didn't have time to get off of his plane or his plane crashed. I'm not sure what happened. Rest in peace, whoever that was. Hey, Brad. It's Badger T. Hey. Uh, I found uh, the tw funniest 18 second, I think, ever of the show. Uh, the Herbo said number 40 between 5 minutes and 4 seconds and 5 minutes and 22 seconds. Um, and I reckon everyone should go look at that right now. Bye. Okay. Everyone go listen to that right around five minutes into the show. It's supposed to be really great. All right, I just want to say, uh, if anybody was looking for a good snowplow show to listen to, or Brad, if you're looking for a good automatic redial... There's, there's a lot of this going around today. So there's a show uh, where you open for Park Dude and Stacy, I think it is, but they don't end up having a show, but then you call up some like restaurant and talk to Drew, and you have him do a shopping spree... And he hmm. picks up, like, multiple 3DSs and, like, smartphones. But you're not sure if, like, he got it from his friends or, like, other people. I don't know. It was a good episode. Oh, yeah, that guy. So, uh, I remember that. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. That was at a Boston Market, wasn't it? He was just going around to tables and taking everyone's shit. And then we had this really incredibly long, uncomfortable conversation at the end of it while he sat there on the phone and waited for a waitress to come over. I didn't know that had anything to do with Park Dude and Stacy though, and I can't remember which show that's from. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was a pretty crazy call. So thank God that's the last voicemail of today. We don't have to listen to any more voicemails. We made it through all the voicemails. Yay for us. Thanks, everybody, for listening to The Snowplow Show. Thank you, Weird Shortwave Listener and Lion9, Michael F., Xander Fett and Cody Nonami for being the sponsors of today's show. If you'd like to support the show and get access to the Hobo Sodes and hear the hilarious phone call that I made to Teen Wolf Jesus's co-worker, then you should definitely support the show. You can do that by going to patreon.com slash phone losers, phone losers.com slash cactus. By the way, I set up new payment options on there now, so you can actually pay with a credit card instead of PayPal. You can just totally skip PayPal now. And then there is also a new project to dot com slash phone losers i put a link to that one in the show notes today so 
you can just click on it instead of trying to figure out how to spell two, you know, whether it's a number or it's T-O-O or T-W-O or T, nobody knows. There's a link now. It's in the show notes. It's at the very top. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. And I'm sorry shows have been scarce lately, especially last week. It seems like I was just having a lot of troubles getting a show to happen last week. I kept trying and stuff wasn't working out. You know, excuses, excuses. I'm so full of them. And, th- and then there was the meetup. That's my other excuse. And then this week, it takes me three days to finally get a show out. Holy crap, why are you guys supporting me? Everyone should just drop their support right now. Uh, Last night, I did a call-in show with Mr. Biggs. We took calls for about an hour. It was pretty fun. And I can't remember if I mentioned it, but last week on Wednesday, I did one of those payphone shows where I sit in my chair and answer the payphone. And I can't even remember how that went. It's That seems like such a long time ago at this point. All I know is I have three episodes of Hang Up the Phone that I have not edited yet and put up on any feeds. But I will put a link in the show notes to both the payphone show from last week and then last night's Hang Up the Phone show with me and Mr. Biggs if you want to hear that. I think we did kind of a meetup wrap-up show, sort of, last night. So that might be interesting to listen to. Maybe. I don't know. Check out snowplowshow.com for the links to all this stuff. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I will definitely have another Snowplow Show done this week. I'm not going to miss two weeks in a row of getting two shows done. Not two weeks ago in the mail I got a ticket. Do not change my telephone number.